Hello, we need to learn about chromosomes and meiosis and how we got to the point where we're at where cells become sex cells and then eventually uh, combine with other sex cells to make a new organism. So here we go. Uh, we're going to start with a guy named Walter Sutton. He's actually an, actually an American uh, geneticist back in 1903. He's working on grasshoppers. That's by the way, that's not that long ago. I mean, I have great-grandparents that were alive during this time. So, 112 years ago, Walter Sutton is studying grasshoppers, and he notices that the body cells of these grasshoppers have 24 chromosomes. We happen to have 46 as humans. Uh, other organisms have different numbers, but grasshoppers have 24 chromosomes. Then he notices... Uh, on the sex cells of these grasshoppers that they only have half that, 12. And from that he deducted that, okay, when a, a male sperm and a female egg form together uh, and fertilization occurs, we go back to having that normal amount, that 24 in the grasshopper's case, uh, a number of chromosomes. Uh, so he really was instrumental in figuring out uh, this chromosome theory of inheritance, that the, the idea that the genes uh, are carried from parents to their offspring on something called a chromosome or chromosomes. Uh, here, just to give you an example or a, a visual of the sizes of these things we're talking about, this is inside a cell. And inside the nucleus, uh, we've learned that there are chromosomes. And inside the chromosomes, if you unwind the nucleosomes and the proteins, you eventually get to something called DNA. Those are That DNA, the double-stranded uh, DNA, is where you find genes, where you find these alleles that each parent is going to give their offspring. That is our genetic information that is awesome for uh, kind of coding and giving the instructions for uh, making proteins that eventually make us look the way we do. And it gives us our uh, heredity, our genes. All right, so how do we get from a body cell that has a, quote, uh, normal, unquote, uh, number of chromosomes to, uh, to a sex cell that only has half that? The process is called meiosis. Uh, you've learned about mitosis. That's the simple uh, process where DNA is doubled, it splits apart. You have two identical cells that came from one. It's how our body grows and repairs itself is mitosis. Meiosis only happens with sex cells for the production of sex cells like sperm and egg. Um, so meiosis is a process by which the number of chromosomes is reduced by half to form the sex cells, the sperm and the egg, which when they're fertilized will get back to the normal number of chromosomes. So how does this happen? It's called meiosis. It looks a lot like mitosis. There is a prophase, a metaphase, an anaphase where the chromosomes move apart, and then a telophase where you have two daughter cells uh, that came from one. Uh, only with meiosis, uh, this kind of happens, that process, twice. So eventually you go from a parent cell, goes through the first part of meiosis to get to two daughter cells that have half the number of chromosomes. And from that, the chromosomes divide into chromatids, these individual strands. This is where the alleles separate, really, and make... Uh, a new genetic com uh, combination. Uh, so we end up having four daughter cells that started from one, but each daughter cell does have half the number of chromosomes uh, that was present at the start. So this happens only with sex cells. It doesn't happen with normal somatic cells. Um, just with sex cells does this meiosis thing happen. Uh, we won't get into any more detail than what you see here. Um, maybe in a college biology class, you'll eventually uh, learn uh, more in depth about the process of meiosis one and meiosis two and crossing over 
it's pretty interesting stuff, but that's all the further we're going today. Um, so, meiosis, and this kind of explains what Mendel was seeing with his Punnett squares. He noticed that one or the other allele was passed on by each parent. Now, that doesn't make sense until you know that these chromosomes actually do get split apart during meiosis and only half of that genetic information from one parent, from any one parent, is passed on to its offspring. So this really does uh, come full circle with uh, the work of Mendel and now uh, Sutton was able to explain, okay, why do we only give one allele uh, to the offspring? Um, this is a picture of uh, all of the chromosomes that a human has. It's, it's uh, the human karyotype, it's called. Uh, these chromosomes will look different. They code for different things. Uh, some of them are uh, linked to which gender you are, if you're XY, a male, or at XX, a female. Um, but all of these chromosomes code for and have the genetic information to make so much uh, difference in, in one individual to the next. Some of these genes are in control of uh, immune system kind of things. Some of these are in control of skin color or eye color, uh, widow's peak, etc. So all of the traits that make you you come from your human karyotype. Uh, we have 46 chromosomes, but other organisms uh, probably don't. This is a list of some other animals, random animals that I chose that do have different numbers of organs or different numbers of chromosomes than we do. Um, the panda has 42. We have 46. The mosquito has six chromosomes. Uh, this fennec fox has 64. This fish happens to have 104. Now, does that mean that fish are more complex and have more genetic information? No. Uh, the number of chromosomes uh, is seemingly random. Uh, but clearly we are more complex than a lot of other organisms uh, and we operate quite a bit differently. Wow, it looks like I can like kiss that fish right there. Sorry, sorry to get... Okay, that's kind of gross, even through the screen. That's all I have for today. This is meiosis and chromosomes. Later.